Well, if we're thinking about what clinicians in dermatology can actually do, I'm going to take it into the treatment room because that's it's easy for us to sit around and tell people what they should do. But we're in a boardroom and we're at a distance and we're not responsible for the patient. So let's put it in the room with the clinician. And they, in the first scenario, would be they have a patient with acne. And they're saying, oh, this patient needs more than just topical treatment. They're not necessarily going to go on isotretinoin. We're going to give them an oral antibiotic. Well, we want to combine it with a good topical regimen. It's a good idea to make sure benzoyl peroxide is there. It doesn't necessarily answer all the questions, but it will help reduce P. acne's resistance. But be thinking about the exit strategy, that we're not necessarily going to have patients on the antibiotic for a long time. We utilize it to try to get the disease under control, but then try to get them off the antibiotic. And that means those patients have to be very compliant with the topical program. On the average, it may be three months or so that the patient would be on the antibiotic, maybe a little bit longer in some people, but you have to have that talk up front and really encourage the compliance. Doesn't mean the disease is going to be completely gone, and it doesn't mean that you may not have to do other things later if you can't control it, but you have to accept that antibiotic resistance is an unavoidable side effect. You may not be seeing it, but it's happening. So having that exit strategy discussion up front is very important with the patient or the parent, whoever's there, helping to make that decision. Now on the infection side, I'm a strong believer in not treating patients empirically in most cases. So if they come in with a folliculitis or uh, something that looks like an abscess and there's purulence, I strongly recommend that you culture because you can never be faulted for confirming the diagnosis. Now there may be cost issues that people can argue, but if you have a patient that then is not getting better, and you don't have the diagnosis, I could easily see somebody saying, well, you know that you're supposed to do a culture and sensitivity. You know, why wouldn't you do it? You could have confirmed the diagnosis. You could be faulted more if you didn't. So then you select your antibiotic therapy based on whether or not you need it. A lot of times we see inflamed cysts uh, and things that likely these patients don't need antibiotics at all. And I would suggest not necessarily giving them unless you really think they have a cellulitis or something else going on. But in general, if it's purulent, I recommend culturing it and then putting patients on antibiotics.